welcome to the award-winning Brooklyn College News, covering New York City and your neighborhood. President Obama visits the Bronx to encourage young men to stay in school. Cherry blossoms brighten Brooklyn. And Brooklyn kids get active to lose weight. All that and more, starting now. Welcome to Brooklyn College News. I'm Linda Herrera. And I'm Courtney Knuckles. President Obama visited Lehman College in the Bronx to talk about race and opportunities for black and Hispanic boys. Carlos Montanez and Ashley Schwartz report. A large crowd of onlookers with cell phones in hand gathered to catch a glimpse of President Obama. Along with distinguished guests like Congressman Charles Rangel, they waited in the sun for nearly an hour. <laughs> Suddenly, Helicopters appeared one after another, hard to pick up the president's Marine One. They landed at a playground across from Lehman College. Then the president's motorcade delivered him to the campus. Once the president entered, police lifted barricades and the crowd surged forward. Students, professors, and what looked like locals got caught up in the excitement. We even saw this cop taking a selfie. Yet, some students just wanted to go to school. It makes some more, more of a hassle just to get inside the building. You know, like, I just want to go downstairs and exercise or something, but even that's a hassle. The president held a closed-door roundtable discussion with young men to talk about race and the challenges they face. After the roundtable discussion, we were only allowed to take still photos when the president addressed a group that included students, educators, and politicians. He introduced his My Brother's Keeper Alliance, a new nonprofit which aims to improve education opportunities for black and Hispanic boys. In every community in America, there are young people with incredible drive and talent. And they just don't have the same kinds of chances that somebody like me had. The president described his personal commitment to helping young people in need. And this will remain a mission for me and for Michelle, not just for the rest of my presidency, but for the rest of my life. Meeting especially President Barack Obama was a, was a great thing. High school students involved with My Brother's Keeper say the program already made a difference in their lives. Since I will be attending the University at Buffalo in the fall of 2015 with a business major, and I do come from the same backgrounds of, of a lot of students that don't get that. After his speech, the president left quickly for a fundraiser in the village. And just like that, it was business as usual on campus, except for the good vibes the president left behind. I called my mom and I sent her a picture. I was like, Mom, Obama's at my school. <laughs> I, I really feel like we're so honored because there's not a lot of campuses that he's visited, as far as I know, in New York. So for Lehman to be chosen to you know, set off his business plans is excellent. This was an historic event for Lehman College. It's the first time in the school's history that a sitting president visited the campus. Reporting from Lehman College, I'm Ashley Schwartz, Brooklyn College News. Michelle Obama wants children to get in shape. In New York, many kids need to get active to stay healthy. The Centers for Disease Control found that more than a third of the city's elementary school students are overweight or obese. Alyssa Andrews and I found a program that wants to reduce the number. Sit-ups, tough exercise, and a lot of activity. These kids get a full workout. Live Light, Live Right, a program sponsored by Brookdale Hospital, teamed up with Knockout Obesity to keep these kids moving. The program is actually uh, based off of boxing background, but it's mixed with a lot of other exercises as well. Uh, not only do we do exercise, but we also do nutritional classes at the end of each lesson because we like to keep kids active, but also with the information based on their background of how they should be eating and what they should not be eating as well. Program founder Dimitri Vituris competed on the Food Network show Fat Chef, and his own weight problem motivated him to help others. Well, this program started because obviously myself, my heaviest weight was 327 pounds. I was born with a congenital heart disease, so I had two open heart surgeries as a young child. So there was a lot of things that I had to, you know, overcome as far as the adversity of not being able to you know, um, be physically active. One out of every seven low-income children are obese. Obese children are more likely to have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and type 2 diabetes, according to the Centers for Disease Control. I definitely think it's a lot worse in uh, urban communities, of course, more of the low-income areas. I mean, they're not 
taught these things. They're not being educated as to what needs to be done. They're being robbed of that by not receiving all of this information because they also need to survive like everybody else. That's why classes like these can make a big difference in urban neighborhoods. Boxing class, it's fun. It's also another way of self-defense. My pants, they used, they used to be tight. It's getting a little bit baggy and I like that. Yes. I love the boxing. And the boxing is nice. Parents also love and participate in the program. Dimitri is an amazing guy. He's an amazing trainer, very dedicated, and they taught us a whole lot about nutrition. We have like bursts of energy now. I mean, we feel much better. More than just looking better, we feel better. To find out more about knockout obesity, you can visit the program's website listed below. Courtney Knuckles, Brooklyn College News. President Obama has big plans, but in Harlem and the Bronx, a teacher started a small program in barbershops to encourage young boys to read. Dominique Rollins has the story. Tyrell gets to read a book while the barber gives him a shape up. The fifth grader loves reading, and a rack in the barbershop gives him choices. It is amazing that children come in here and they see those bright colors and see that there are books there, and they pick them up. Alvin Irby, a former kindergarten and first grade teacher, created Barbershop Book. Focus on just creating fun reading experiences for boys. 80% of young black males read below grade level according to the National Education Association. And Irby wants to change that. If there are more boys um, reading um, for fun, then that means that um, we have more boys who are improving their reading skills. And, you know, all teachers, the community, you know, everybody knows that, you know, reading is really important. Irby convinced five barbershops in Harlem and the Bronx to stock books he provides, and the kids love it. it gives kids something to do at the barbershop. I really hope that Barbershop Book inspires boys to be lifelong readers. So far, Barbershop Books hosts up to six tracks in barbershops in the Bronx and Harlem, hoping to add up to 25 barbershops by the end of the year. Dominique Rollins, Brooklyn College News. If you ride the subway, you know the frustration, delays, route changes, and canceled service. Monique Jones went underground and found commuters who wish the MTA provided consistent service. Subway delays and suspensions make daily commuting difficult and often nightmarish for the six million commuters who use the system every day. Today was the four train and the F train was delayed and it caused me to be late. There's been a lot of problems, you know, a lot of people are complaining, including myself, you know, uh, trying to get to work on time. It's ridiculous. Temporary suspensions make some commutes a gamble. During a recent weekend, the MTA suspended the four train for new lots to Bowling Green in both directions, and the three and four trains will begin to skip Rockaway and Van Sicklin Avenues in both directions until September. Riders will have to use shuttle buses to get where they are going. It probably adds on an additional 10 to 15 minutes onto my commute, and given that I'm in school, if I'm running late, then I'm running really late. The MTA says the work is part of its scheduled improvement plan, but it needs more money to speed things up. Mayor de Blasio recently promised to give the authority another $657 million, but it's not clear if that will solve the problem. Monique Jones, Brooklyn College News. Pope Francis honored a New York rabbi and made him a Vatican Knight. The ceremony took place right here in New York. Tanera Teicher and Natalie Friedman went to the celebration. Cardinal Timothy Dolan hugged Rabbi Arthur Schneier and gave him a medal, making him a papal knight. Catholic, Jewish, and leaders from other religions celebrated Rabbi Schneier's new honor. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger and former Mayor David Dinkins joined the group in the Vatican's Manhattan townhouse. They all embraced the idea of better interfaith relations. It's Pope Francis's very touching, very tender way of confirming him in the good works that he's done on behalf of religious freedom. Rabbi Schneier, the leader of Park East Synagogue, survived the Holocaust. He now works on the international scene to promote goodwill between religions and to encourage religious tolerance. He told us what his work means to him. I, I was not any better than those who perished, but you want to pay back. And you pay back by saying, I don't want any other people to endure the suffering and degradation that I endured. Manhattan Democratic Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney told us she thinks Robert Schneier deserves the honor. And he deserves it. He has um, headed the appeal of consciousness, religious freedom. Wherever there's strife, he seems to be there. Uh, peace is in his DNA. Pope Francis hopes to visit New York in September. We don't know yet whether a visit to Rabbi Schneier's synagogue is on his schedule. 
Natalie Friedman, Brooklyn College News. New York celebrates spring with a splash of color at the Brooklyn Botanical Garden. The cherry blossoms draw the crowd, but Mariah Stevens says they get a full Japanese cultural experience. Big drums and bright pink cherry blossom trees attract visitors from around the world. It's more than I expected. I've never seen such beautiful trees and flowers. The flowers, this is not the same like we have back home, so this is really beautiful. <laughs> the Sakura Matsuri Cherry Blossom Festival at the Brooklyn Botanical Garden celebrates Japanese culture. Which is a wonderful celebration of springtime and the cherry blossoms, but it's also a really incredible way for us to show over 60 performances related to Japanese culture. Japanese American taiko drum drew a crowd and little children danced to the beat. We enjoy flower and then food and dance. Uh, that's our tradition. So we are very, very happy to have same tradition here in the States. You could also find performances that fuse Japanese and hip hop culture. Cosplay and traditional Japanese dancing. This is the 34th anniversary of the Cherry Blossom Festival. To learn more about the event, you can visit Brooklyn Botanical Garden's website at bbg.org. Reporting from Brooklyn Botanical Garden, I'm Mariah Stevens, Brooklyn College News. A quinceañera marks a young girl's evolution from childhood to womanhood, and these perfect dresses make a big day complete. The dresses, the parties mean big business, and Melina's Gill found plenty of people competing to get a piece of it. Fabulous dress fit for a quinceañera or 15-year-old to celebrate the big day. One Mexican-inspired dress after another hit the runway at the Museum of Moving Image in Queens. Organizers called it the Bridal and Quinceañera Expo and invited small businesses that offer services to the Latin community. The turnout overwhelmed the organizers. And the doors opened and I think 500 people walked in in the first 25 minutes. So we are just so blessed and so excited that it's been so well received in the community. You want music at your event? You could find it here too. Every kind of music. The expo showcased everything from music to flowers to makeup to shoes to tasty cakes. It's beautiful, the jewelry, the dresses, um, like signing up for different things, cakes, um, drinks and everything. It's, it's awesome. I this event also worked for non-Latino crowd shopping for a Swig 16. I got my photo booth here, so I'm really excited. Bridal clothes also took center stage and thrilled the audience. The business people selling at the expo appreciated the opportunity. We've been able to get some really good qualified conversations and qualified leads from this. The focus on the Latino community seemed just right to World Bride magazine editor Meredith Leon McCormick. We need to show other parts of, you know, American culture that's here that, you know, so they feel like they're a part of it. And the Latin American community is a huge market. Many quinceañeras and brides walked out of the museum ready for their big day. The expo was so successful that the organizers are already planning for their second one. Melina Skill, Brooklyn College News. Spicy food, some people like it hot, and a new Brooklyn business hopes to cash in on the hot sauce trend. Yusuf Rashid learns just how hot it can get. You might want to head over to White Avenue in Greenpoint if you love hot sauce. The Heatnist features 150 flavors of, you guessed it, hot sauce. Ooh. Nice. Think? I love that guy. According to researcher Euromonitor International, the U.S. hot sauce market has grown by 150% since 2000. That's more than ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, and barbecue sauce combined. Tyler McCusick and his partner Noah Chamberg loved hot sauce since they were kids, and that inspired them to start their business. We realized that there's this big sort of craft movement going on with the hot sauce community, and we wanted to show the world that there are so many great um, options. Bottles with names like Zombie Apocalypse, Tears of the Sun, Hellacious Hot Sauce, and Grapes of Wrath line the Heatnist's shelves. Mimi Webb of Virginia tried the Hawaiian Hamajang Smoked Ghost Pepper and found her favorite. I like stuff that's not super gloppy or anything like that. This is really like light. You can, it's very vinegary and it's also super smoky. The hottest sauce that we currently have is a sauce that contains both the Carolina Reaper, which was, as of last year, named the hottest pepper in the Guinness Book of World Records, and it also contains the Maruga Scorpion, which is the second hottest pepper in the world. And it's called uh, Coley's Firewater. Just like yep. okay. That's hot. 
<laughs> Which hot sauce would Tyler pick if he were on a deserted island? That's, that's too hard of a question. That's just not a life that you want. <laughs> I just terribly feel bad for myself in that situation. I can't even do it. Next up, Tyler and his partner plan to create a series of hot sauce events. Yusuf Rashid, Brooklyn, College News. A new basketball court will help update Tompkins Square Park in the East Village. And YouTube celebrities came out to help the Parks Department get the word out. Dennis Ureña and Malinus Gill take us to the action. YouTube stars Dude Perfect came to Tompkins Square Park to help the city promote the renovation of the basketball courts. Um, it just kind of just helped the community, just revive these courts in this community and just use as a place to gather people, come out, hang out, and enjoy life. To make the event a big deal, YouTube and Dude Perfect created games and raffles for everyone who came out. Kids and adults played games at six game stations and entered a lottery to win autographed soccer balls and t-shirts. It is great, you know, they got like the community outreach going, people from the all over the neighborhood have come out to enjoy something nice. New York City Parks Commissioner Michael Silver said that they picked the right park in the city. Well, Thomas Square has a long, long history. This place has transformed this neighborhood. And this park is one of the great, incredible spaces in this neighborhood. So this is a great place to, to have the event and also help improve this court. People in the park love the attention and also think the park needs help. I think it's about time because this rim was almost falling off and the rim down there fell off too. And Dude Perfect seemed to enjoy the day too. Construction starts soon and the city plans to reopen the courts before the summer ends. Melina Skill. Brooklyn College News. Parks and professional fields offer more than sport. They also serve up good food. City Field hosted the Bacon and Bear Festival. Chefs and restaurants from around the country shared their favorites. Dominique Rollins and Dennis Ureña got a taste of it all. Thousands took to the field and the concourse at City Field to sample craft beers and bacon treats. We're here to enjoy the beautiful weather. Get some beer, eat some bacon, enjoy all the beautiful people. Visitors bought tickets for the event and then they got to taste and sip it all. It's great to be able to get out and meet people and, you know, have a one-to-one -one with people when uh, they taste everything. Chefs and vendors brought their favorite beer and bacon dishes. The guys at Whitman's got us excited about their juicy burger with lots of extras. What we're serving today is a peanut butter bacon burger made from Pat Lafrida meat with a, just a dollop of Skippy and some wonderful Newski's bacon. But Frank Ottomanelli told us his family of butchers knows the real secret to the best burger. What's different from any other burger restaurant is that we know the way to get the best meat. We know the farms that where we're getting our meat from. We make everything fresh every day. We can't forget the beverage part of the festival. Max from Down East Cider House in Massachusetts showed off his cider. We you know, we, we make some very unique style ciders. So our original blend is a uh, an unfiltered cider that we actually, it's a style we sort of originated. Guidon Cole from Original Sin also shared his company's cider. We have an orchard in upstate where we grow 100, uh, 90 varieties of apples and we're featuring two, two ciders today. One's an apricot uh, made with fresh apricots and one's our, our original apple. Organizers take the show on the road and host bacon and beer festivals in ballparks and stadiums all across America. This is Dennis Ureña, Brooklyn College News. Social media connects people together, and one artist takes advantage of it to promote his art through scavenger hunts. I got a chance to sit down with the artist and get a sneak peek of his latest project. Nobody really supports the, the dream of being an artist, or they don't think it's profitable. So artist Andres Gallardo turned the business of art upside down. He uses Instagram, Facebook, and other social media to promote his work. He tells followers that he's placed his work in offbeat locations and invites them to come find it and take it for free. He calls his work GEMS. G-E-M um, started becoming giving everyone moments. So basically that, that means um, no matter how messed up of a day or you may have, uh, the minute you find a piece, I started seeing their reactions and it was, it was something beautiful. It was giving them this beautiful moment despite everything they were going through. We follow the Long Island artist to Harlem. In a park, he uses stencils, vinyl records, and spray paint to create artwork. He used a recent earthquake in Nepal as a theme. It became a teaching moment for kids about Nepal. You know, there's 7,000 some people that died, kids that don't have homes now, so they wish, I, I'm sure they wish they had homework at least. 
Later that day, we went to Central Islip in Long Island, where followers from social media came out to meet him and see his work. I think that's very unique because he's doing it in a different way on vinyl, on records, on jackets. He asked for donations for the Red Cross to help the people of Nepal. This is art for good, so it's it's exciting. Andres says the support he gets from his followers keeps him going. Life is life is love, really. You know, I, I think love is the, the greatest inspiration for for why I create. Andres supports himself by selling some of his art. You can follow him on Instagram or Facebook under Art of Andres. Our sports team, Carlos Montañez and Danielle Brooks, takes us to Yankee Stadium and the College of Staten Island. Carlos, Danielle? The New York City Football Club has played six games so far and continues to generate crowds at Yankee Stadium. Sebastian Velasquez and the New York City Football Club came out strong against the Portland Timbers. Crowds roared at Yankee Stadium. Jeb Brovsky tried to get into the net, but goalkeeper Adam Kowarzy made the save, one of his five on the night. Late in the second half, the Timbers scored. It was downhill from there, but to coach Jason Kreis, the goal was unfortunate. And any time a goal happens, there's going to be multiple players that have made multiple mistakes. But in the other two instances, uh, I really could point to one guy and say, you made a critical, critical error that, that led to that goal. Uh, and this one for me, no. I mean, this one we have guys sliding, uh, trying to do anything they can to stop a shot. And then it hits a what, what looked like two deflections to end up in the back of our net. Another one nothing loss, but players maintain their optimism. You obviously have patches where you get a little bit unlucky and then... You know, later in the year, you hope the ball bounces your way. Um, I think we can walk out of here with our heads held high. Guys performed very well. I thought our possession was great. Going forward, we did very well. Um, just got a little unlucky there. I thought I created chances. I thought I helped uh, others create. But, you know, like I said, we need that final piece to the puzzle to, to finish it off. Here on campus, the Lady Bulldogs stumbled at the beginning of the season, but the softball team turned things around. They finished in the win column and they advanced to the CUNY wide playoffs. With finishing the season above 500 with a 16 to 18 record, the Bulldogs headed into the playoffs ready to win a championship in the double elimination rounds. They started off Friday afternoon putting on a show for the crowd crushing Hunter College 10 to 0. but lost momentum later that day, losing to the CSI Dolphins 0-6. They came in Saturday looking to avenge that loss to CSI by defeating Hunter again, but fell short by losing to Hunter 1-3. Catcher Samantha Rodriguez shared her thoughts on the game. Uh, we played really well. We come a long way from last year. Every year we get better and better. Uh, last year we kind of got beat up a little bit in the playoffs, and this year we really stood in the game and gave every team a fight that we played. Coach Ponsiglione reflected on the season. Well, we won 20 games, which is an accomplishment. We're happy about that. We're hoping to get an ECAC bid and get an opportunity to play some more. So whenever you win more games than you lose, it's a successful season. The Bulldogs might have lost a chance to become CUNYAC champions, but they were selected to play in the Eastern College Athletic Championships May 6th against the Hunter Hawks. That's it for sports. I'm Danielle Brooks. And I'm Carlos Montanez. Back to you, Linda and Courtney. Bruce Jenner got people talking about transgender life. Mariah Stevens and I found what Brooklynites think. Olympic champion, reality TV star, celebrity father and husband, the spotlight always finds Bruce Jenner. Once again, Bruce makes headlines, but this time for a different role. He sat down with ABC's Diane Sawyer to talk about his transition from male to female. We took to the streets of Brooklyn to find out what people think about Bruce's revelation. He used to be a great Olympic track star, but I think the Hollywood, the money, the Kardashians, the family, I think they're all gone. I think they're all shot out. I feel like it's definitely not a hero, you know what I mean? He, he, he represents a lot of people that can't be true to themselves and can't accept who they are as, as people and, and the way that God made them. By him coming out, he just wants all the rumors and all the trash talk to end. He just wants to let the world know, like, this is who I am. I think that what he's doing, it just strictly goes against the Most High God. It goes against the Bible. I think he's a little bit old and he probably he's probably not comfortable with his body and he's not proud of being a man that's why he wants to become more feminine 
to me it's uh, it's a mental illness and he should definitely go see a psychologist. If he feels like this is what he needs to do at this point in life then then go for it. I saw parts of the interview and I thought they did a very good job that they didn't sensationalize it and they were showing um, historically how transgender people had been mistreated and um, hoping that the education that they provided will help people think before they're mean to people because they're different. I think what he did was absolutely commendable. I think it took a lot of courage and determination to really stand out and be proud of who he is. Um, I think he inspired a lot of people to be comfortable in who you are. We're in a society now where this, you know, America's changing, the world is changing, and you should be proud of who you are. You should never have to resist and you know battle whatever internal feelings and stuff that you're dealing with. For Bruce Jenner, the decision to become a woman is personal, but he got the conversation going about what it means to be transgender. Reporting from Flatbush, I'm Mariah Stevens, Brooklyn College News. That's it for Brooklyn College News. I'm Linda Herrera. And I'm Courtney Knuckles. See you next time.